Oh my god! It's happening! Se preparó, se puso linda, su amiga llamaba. Salió de rumba, la tal y volvió. Porque su novio fue a la gang. The first person I've ever had on my channel ever. Really? I think so. Wow. I don't think Look so. Look at that, it's the first for everything. I'm gonna move my chair back. Hi guys! Hola, como estas, bitches? I'm here with, <laughs> with me. I'm here with the Sammy G. Go tell your fucking I'm mom. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm so excited. Okay, so if you guys don't know Sammy, she is like my coworker. She's my salon mom. I'm basically her mother at she, work, pretty much. I'm Literally. so dead. She's really not like that old. She, how old are you? <laughs> how young am I? How young are you? Bitch, I'm, like, bitch, I'm 26. Years. Right, so we're going to do a McBong. Yeah, this is in the, the first. This yeah, is the in first the car. Time. This is the first one I've ever done. On okay. your channel? Ever. Wow. Yeah. All my that. channel a, ever, first guest. Like, we're literally, we're thing. doing monumental moments right now. We're like a whole mood. You're welcome, bitches. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> There's like a little girl dancing next to us. Dude, she's so <laughs> lit. I look, you was about to get off the car and be like, oh, girl, get shit. But I'm like, let me chill because her mom's not even paying attention. But we okay. got canes. We got canes. And the little viejitos are like coming out you of know, the car. You know, I'm only, why is she mugging me so hard, bitch? So we are going to do some questions real quick. So I have 10 questions that I'm going to be asking Sammy. Oh, me? Yeah. Wow. I'll, I'll answer them too, but like, They're this is so you guys, me. yeah, we're going to do like an interview almost. Oh, so we cool. can get to know, you know, people in the industry and everything. So, um, first of all, tell them how long have you been doing, um, hair? So oh, I'm, I'm Sammy. I've been doing hair for eight years. I've been in the industry a good amount of time. You know, your girl's. A little seasoned. Much. About yeah. how, how many? Eight. Eight. Oh my god! I thought you meant eight that. years. My anniversary was actually on um, Halloween. Oh, fun! You know, because it was spooky season. Oh my god! It was gosh. my favorite season. Okay, so first question: What made you want to get into the beauty industry? Um. So, what made me want to? What made you so, get into it? I don't it? know why I was a weird kid. You know, like I just always like did my hair, my makeup. Like when I was in high school, because when I was little, little, I was like. A little boy like I'm not even lying like I was like a big-ass tomboy like people who know me now and knew me like when I was little they cannot believe that it's the same person like they're like who the hell are you but I just really got into doing hair and makeup when I was in high school and then I wanted to go into the industry to do makeup and I remember I went to beauty school thinking like oh they're gonna teach me how to do makeup but then they did not you know like you get there and you're like oh they're gonna teach me how to do all this shit and I didn't know how to do anything true story if you guys are in beauty school, don't think you won't be learning anything. You ain't gonna learn nothing. The only thing you're gonna learn is like the fundamentals of you learning how to answer your questionnaires on your TDLR test, like your exam, for you to pass to get your license. And you went to a little one, right? A little school or no? I went to Ogle and to ITS. Oh, okay, so that, you're kind of big schools. So. Yeah, I went to two. But that's because like... I had some things go on during that really? time. Really? So, yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Hey guys, that's another story. Yeah, it's another, that's a whole another video. You guys uh, video. have to check out Sammy's channel. Yeah, to my be channel will be on some stuff. bullshit. <laughs> I know you guys are always asking about like beauty related questions and like beauty school, and I have a lot of professionals that watch my videos. Mm -hmm. So I kind of wanted to make this like professional, almost like advice kind of thing, and then. In a different video on a different day, we will do more like personal in, in, in detail. Depth. We can do relationships. We can talk about everything oh, else. My lord. Oh, second question: Or what are some misconceptions you ran into when you started working? When I started working, I think I went in thinking like, "Oh, I'm gonna have clientele out the ass." When I first, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I'm gonna be busy all the time. But you have to remember going into this industry you are your business so you are your own brand you are your own you're your face you know you are the person that's going to get you clientele so you have to remember going in you can't just show up at a salon thinking oh they're going to give me all the clientele i need like it's basically you grinding to get your own clientele and yeah. i didn't know that at first so i went in and I apprenticed, and then when it was time to get models, I was like, oh, re I really got to go out there and put myself out there to, like, mm -hmm. get these people and interact with people, you know? I feel like a lot of people think that because you're in a salon, that the salon's going to bring you guys clients. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's a big misconception because it's like, no, you really, if, like, especially if you're a booth runner... It's up to you. Like, you're only going to make as much money as, as you, you want to make. As much work as you put in is how much work you're going to get out of it, basically. Yeah, like, if you don't want to put any work, if you're just, like, lazy and you're just, like, sitting at home doing nothing and you're not at the salon and you're not promoting your work online, mm -hmm. like, that's literally not going to get you anywhere. Like, you're not going to get any clients. You're not going to make any money. Mm -hmm. Like, you're going to be suffering. And then you're still going to have to pay your booth rent. You can't be shy. 
don't be shy. Because if you're shy and you feel... Because as a stylist, like as anything, as a business owner, people are going to say good things and they're going to say bad things. So you have to remember you have to have like thick skin to come mm-hmm. in this industry because you have to be able to handle whatever anyone throws at you to keep going. Because if not, you can get discouraged and then be like, oh, this isn't what I want to do. I don't want to do hair no more. And you give up. Too. But you also have to know like you're going to make mistakes. Mm-hmm. Like don't think like every single client is going to be happy with your work and they're going to be like appreciating you and everything like no you're going to nobody's perfect like Mm -hmm. rome wasn't built in a day so your career is not going to be built in a day like i'm eight years in and my career is still growing like i'm still learning things to this day so it's like you don't learn everything overnight and you constantly have to take classes and everything and education really is key Mm -hmm. i I think education is like worth going to to classes and stuff investing in yourself and, and that yeah, goes you're into like investing in yourself. And that goes into like um, why people, why stylists charge the prices that they charge is because mm-hmm. they be spending a lot of money, and they're like investing into their careers. Yep. I went to school. I know how to do hair. Here I am. Like no, you still want to hire me. Yeah, yeah. No. What's some advice you would give young stylists entering into the industry? If you are debating booth rent versus, what's the other one? Commission. Commission. Um. I think definitely be ready for it. Mm-hmm. Like, definitely know that you're, like, you know you're going to have, a, a like, a steady clientele. You think you, you know, like, I think you need to be... Mentally prepared. Mentally prepared. I want to say to all the little stylists who are lost right now, because I remember my ass was lost as hell, and I was like, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm just going to do it and see what's going to work. Um, kind of think about your career and what you are kind of working towards like do you want to do more color do you want to do extensions do you want to do eyelashes do you want to do whatever because as a cosmetologist you can do all types of things you can do facials and everything but and I get it being a full service salon but I feel like a lot of people look for specialists so find your one thing that you're interested in and work towards that. Like us, it's mostly color and extensions. Like that's our main thing. Like you perfect it too. Yeah, and you want to be you want to be a specialist in your field for people to want to come to you and take pictures of your work. Make sure they're clear. Make sure you you remember what you did to achieve that look. So when someone else shows you like, hey, I want this, you can tell them yes or no, debating on where their hair is at. You know what I mean? Because you don't want to give someone false hope thinking their hair is going to look in the exact same way as it does on the picture, and it's not going to. So you have to want to set them up for to be be open-minded. Realistic. Yeah, realistically. It's an inspiration photo. It's not your your main goal that you're going to achieve. And I mean, it's good to have goals. Like, you want to learn everything, Mm -hmm. like different things. But at the same time, it's like, would you rather be really good at one thing and be booked up for that one thing? Or be mediocre at a bunch of things and then just not really be booked mm-hmm. for anything. Cause yeah. Because you're going back and forth. Because I know people ask me, like, hey, do you know someone who does this? Do you know someone who does that? Because they're looking for a specialist. But, yeah, like, definitely see what you're into. And then once you find what you want to specialize in, I think getting a mentor and somebody that can really um, help you and, you know, what you're trying to achieve is a really good mm-hmm. thing, too. Find who's the best in your area and see if they do apprenticeships and stuff yeah. like that. Because... That'll be really beneficial. Or even just ask for advice. Like, Mm -hmm. I have girls ask me all the time, like, little questions here and there. And I don't mind answering them because I remember what it's like to be like, oh, shoot, I don't know how to do this. Or I don't know if I'm doing this right. Or, you know, I don't know what I need to be doing to get to a certain point. So I feel like just reach out to people that you look up to and just try to, like, see what they did and see where, where, how they got where they're at. I feel like. I mean, don't be afraid to do it. I do feel like some people nowadays are kind of stingy. They are. Like, they don't want to share any secrets. A lot of people are very stingy. That's why I try to be nice and try to give, like, little advice. Like, yeah, I get it. Someone can't give you their full technique because it's something we paid for. But, like, little, like, words of encouragement and, you know, direction. Or even, like, what would you use to tone this? Yeah, or like, oh, hey, I like this color. What toner did you use, if you don't mind me asking? But make sure whenever you're approaching someone that you're looking up to, watch your verbiage. Because if they feel like you're coming off as like, oh, hey, how'd you do that? You know, that doesn't sound professional. It just kind of sounds rude. It sounds rude. And you want to sound professional so that way they feel like, oh, okay, they're coming at me in a correct manner. Let me respond and help them out. Actually, I mean... I'm just going to put that out there. If you say, hey, I admire your work. Hey, like, you do a really good job. I was just curious about, like, you know, like. If you can help me out. If you yeah. can help me. That also would, like, 
to me at least I'm more inclined to want to help them just mm-hmm. because I'm like oh like they're being really nice it's not just hey what toner did you use you know how, how I look like that kind of dry <laughs> it just sounds dry to me it just sounds like oh yeah how it looks yeah make sure you like use commas and like make sure I mean you want to be professional don't, you know? don't get me wrong I grew up in Northside so um, I grew up hood so I can understand how sometimes you don't see how you're certain things you're you perceived that from someone else that's a professional because I mean I've done it before like back in the day when I was younger I've done it like come at someone like oh hey how'd you do that you know because it sounds to you it sounds okay but to us as professionals we're like what why is she asking me like that and like, I feel oh. like you have to remember what like I mean it's cool like people you know they feel like they know you and you're like friends and everything but at the mm. same time you have to like be a little careful because it's like you don't know them personally so that other people that are you that you say certain things to they could take it another way like oh she's just being unprofessional rude mm-hmm. or whatever and it's like you're not meaning it like that you just feel so comfortable they could read they could misread the context of your of your message of your message it's like when you're texting someone and they're you're not even mad and then someone's like why are you mad and you're like i wasn't mad it, and it's like it just seems the way you type it out yeah unless you're talking in person it's kind of like you can't really tell how they're like saying mixed it. messages who are some top stylists you look up to within the industry it's so terrible to be like i really don't know me no, i was kidding <laughs> <laughs> like i think mm, i think everyone honestly because like i follow mostly for me i follow a lot of um locals I follow a lot of local people and it's not to compare work it's not to to hate or to anything i feel like everyone's in their own level of you know of work the way that they they do their hair the way they do a certain technique or whatever because nobody does every does hair the same nobody does it's that's where the artistry comes in is where everyone has their own take tattoos and take on their art so i feel like for me i like to look at local people's stuff just to like admire their work and you know like how we said like oh i like your toner do you mind like letting me know Mm -hmm. because then you get inspired by other people and that makes them want to help you you'd be so surprised how just don't be bitter dude like don't be like a hater how far being nice will get you yeah helpful will get you because i've I've talked to people that they're like oh i would never whatever blah 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 blah, like because you know i wouldn't share my information blah 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 you know like or they're just trying to hate on me like no dude in this industry there's so many of us we're all gonna eat like like literally eating like we're all gonna eat like at the end of the day there's so many people in this world so many clientele and, like we'll see some people's work and we'll be like oh it's really good but then the client will come in and be like oh i didn't like how they did it yeah it's so like, it's personal preference mm-hmm. there's not like anybody like specifically that i'm like i feel like different clients have different expectations and some clients are better with different stylists so yeah I feel like you have to learn how to be like, okay, I don't think I'm the stylist for you, but here's this person. Because I've done that before where I gave, like, my clients away to somebody because I was like, yeah, you know, I don't think they fit with me, but I think they'd be good with so-and-so. But think about it, too. Like, there are a bunch of different personalities. Yeah. So, like, some people may be like, I've had some clients, I'm not, I'm going to be honest, I've had some clients that are really hood. I'm not, like, really hood of a person. I grew up in a small country town, so mm-hmm. I'm really, like, chill and conservative. And then I get some people that are really, like, they cuss every other word and they're very, like blunt and they don't care Mm -hmm. and and you know sometimes it's like oh i don't think this part like i don't think we mesh i try to like mold myself to like my clients but yeah sometimes me i'm very good at changing my environment yeah so i'm good at that because i grew up ghetto so i know what it's (laughs) like to be ghetto but i'm also educated now i'm a lot further than what i was before Mm -hmm. so i've learned how to like kind of be appealing to different types of clientele you know what I mean? But also, I do have clientele as well that I'm like, oh my goodness, I don't think this one's for me. You know what I mean? So, yeah. it just have you depends. ever had any? What? That clients that you're like. That I've gotten rid of? Yes, I have. Fired? And I've had to fire clients not because of anything. I've never really had anyone be nasty to me except one, one time, but I'll make a story time about that. But I've never had someone be real nasty to me until like. I think maybe the middle of my career when I was already kind of like needy, like in the mid, like three, four year count. But like I've had clients lately and like previously that just the way their verbiage is towards me or I could just tell that every time they come in, it's just not working out with them. And I'm like trying my hardest to like satisfy them and it's not working. Yeah. So eventually I have to be like, hey, I'm sorry. I don't want you to think that I, I 
can't do this or I don't want to do this. It's just I don't think I'm the one for you because yeah. I've already gone through these multiple sessions of trying to get you, you and then you're yeah, to not. please you. And it's stressing me out now at this point to the point where I don't even want to do it anymore. And it's like if you don't even want to do it, why do it? Because your whole heart's not going into it. You know yeah. what I mean? You don't want to do half ass work. You want to do something that you're and proud you, of. Like, and not only that, like really I know I do get some comments like on my story times and they're like, Oh well it's still money. Like That's why wouldn't thing. you do it if it's still money? You and have I'm to like remember in this industry don't do everything for money. Do everything because you want to do it. Like, I've had clients that love their hair, and I didn't like the way it looked, and I've redone it. Because I'm like, I didn't like the way I did that. I want you to come back so I can make it better. Like, so you just have to think that's your work. But, yeah, that's like, it's your it. work. So, I mean, it could be. And I know this is, most of the people that comment that kind of stuff, they're not, like, in the hair industry. They're just people that are commenting just because of their perspective. Mm -hmm. And as a hairdresser, if you're working for yourself, you want to put out work that you're happy and proud of. And you don't want to just do it because, oh, I still made like 200, 300 dollars for that hair. You want to tell me, you know, I'm gonna tell you why. When I first started, I was money hungry because you know your girl came up with no, from nothing. So I was money hungry. I was trying to get clients in, like who wherever I could fit them in. And I was like, oh, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this. You become overwhelmed, and then you become like, okay, maybe I shouldn't have taken on this much responsibility because it's like too much pressure. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So from there you kind of like start to weed out like what kind of work you would do what kind of work you wouldn't do because I've had friends that didn't want a color correction and I do color corrections a lot and I've had them give them to me because they're like hey dude I don't feel comfortable doing this I would rather you do it because I don't want to like do half-ass work on it you know what I yeah. mean not half-ass work but like I don't understand how I'm supposed to do this like correctly so it's just you need you need to find your space where you feel comfortable because it's not fair to your clients for you to just be like fuck it I'm gonna do it because it's a $300 ticket and then you don't it doesn't come out the way it could have came out if you would have really taken your time to do it yeah you know because you don't want to give out mediocre work because then you're gonna get mediocre feedback and that's gonna look bad on you at yeah the end of the especially day. It, I mean it also depends on where you live but if you live in a small town, it'll get, like, word of mouth is everything. Mm -hmm. So oh, it'll wow. get around that, oh, she doesn't do a good job, or, oh, she didn't really care. Oh, she, you know, she, like, however like you she are. didn't have time for me, she was rushing me, or, yeah. you know. And sometimes us as stylists, we get busy, and we have to remember our clients are watching. So your clients are watching your move. You don't want to be frustrated at work. You don't want to be like, oh, my God, I got to hurry up and do this because I got to go. Like, no. No, you want to make sure that... You're giving them a good experience. A good experience. Let's see. How hard was it for you when you started out to um, build building a clientele and managing your clients and everything? I have always been really, like, into social media and stuff. So when it came to getting clients, I just kind of really hustled when it came to, like, following. And I have a whole video on that where it came to following and trying to find clients and stuff. So I feel like it wasn't that hard for me to start up. I haven't struggled yet paying booth rent. Mm -hmm. But, of course... I'm not going to jinx myself because I feel like <laughs> if I say it, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. But um, I didn't struggle too much just because I learned marketing and promoting is literally everything yes. while I was being put, while I was on commission. So while I was on commission before I went booth rent, that's where I really hustled and I really tried to um, get clients and stuff. So I didn't really struggle too much when it came to that managing though. Me, um, I would say my first year, so back in the day, yeah, 2011, when I first started, I think my main thing was doing my time management of knowing how long it was going to take me in between clients to take another client. So I had to do trial and error where I had clients overrun time schedules. So now I'm I'm good to where I can schedule someone and then, and I'm, no. and then I'm already almost done by the time they get there, like the next person gets there. Yeah. So, so how I many think, do you think you can put in a day? In one day, I've done... Now, like, recently, I've done, like, four or five in one day. Like a balayage? Yeah, or like balayage. Because uh, mm -hmm. yeah. I can do them in, like, within that's three hours. Yeah, within three to four hours. That's crazy. Yeah. Oh, but that's a long day, too. Yeah, it's a long day. It's, like, starting at, like, 8 o'clock in the morning and, and ending, like, at 8, 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock at night. Like, a 12, 13-hour day. day. Yeah. And I'll, I don't do them a lot because I get tired. But I if I have to do it, I'm going to do it. Also, it's, like, if I have a day like that the day before, I just try to make sure I have a chill day. 
because yeah, I don't want to have over back to back. Yourself. Yeah, you don't want to burn yourself out and to the point where you don't even want to do it anymore. Mm -hmm. So like, don't think, oh, like it was a busy I'm gonna love day this forever. Well, it's no, like it's a busy day. I made like say you made like a thousand dollars in the day. Well, don't get cocky and be like, tomorrow I'm gonna do the same thing and make nope. another thousand, and then we're gonna do this six days a week. Like, no, like you'll burn out, and then you're not gonna like I to think do hair. What it is is it's like it comes in waves. So. Like, there's a week where you're going to be stupid busy. There's going to be a week where you only have a couple clients that week. Or you have a busy-ass Saturday and you don't have... You have, like, little tiny haircuts here and there through the week. So you just have to learn how to manage your time management. Also, remember, pre-booking is also key to success because you already have that person set for the next time. So that way they're there for your future yeah, for booking. Future. Yeah. And that's the whole, like, there's so, there's many, so topics many topics to and, go like, over. details that you could do. Because then that goes into, like, okay, should you ask deposits? Should you do this? Should, like, there's so many different things that we'll just have to talk about in different mm -hmm. videos. Did you ever have moments where you wanted to give up or felt discouraged? No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, like, when I first started out, I feel like more than I do now. Well, mm, yeah, more than I do now. I've been pretty blessed so far. Mm -hmm. But in the beginning, when I didn't know how to do stuff, and then I would have, you know, the client's hair wouldn't come out good. They would yell at me, or they would be upset or something. And then they just made you feel like you're worthless, because they're like, you couldn't do my hair. Like, I don't even want you to touch my hair. Like, I don't want mm -hmm. you to do it. That will make you feel. But don't worry. So, making noises. when you start, I'm going to put this out there right now. When you start um, going on your own... Like, after you leave a salon, like, because I was in a salon for two years, and then I did um, booth rent, like, on my own. Mm -hmm. There's going to be mistakes. You're going to make mistakes. It's going to happen. It's not fun. It makes you feel like a failure your first time you mess up, because I've messed up before. I'm not going to lie. It's going to happen. When that does, you just have to remind yourself, like, this is okay. Like, even though, you know, your client's pissed or, you know, yeah. they're, they're yelling at you or, and I know you want to go was, cry. Yeah, you want to <laughs> go cry in the back and you're like, I don't even want to deal with this. You have to find a way to be professional and deal with it and own up to your shit. Like, be like, okay, you're right. Here's your refund. All right, you did this, whatever. And that, you guys, that we will do a whole other story time Dude, of there's client so horror stories. There's you so guys many. think that I'm so bad for talking about my client horror stories, but I'm like, no. This I'm is gonna real start, life. Yeah, I'm like, going to start bringing more professionals into my videos so that you can yeah, see like, and hear other people's and stories. I've, and I noticed when I was younger, too, a lot more people, like how I told you, like, y'all are younger, you know? Mm -hmm. And a lot more people came at me because they're like... Oh, well, she's, you know, I feel like they think, oh, well, she's young, so she's not going to, you know, mm -hmm. stand up for herself or something, you know, or they think like they're you're, bien, a lot of or they think that you're bien pendeja, like that you're not going to catch on to certain shit. Cause I've had people come up to me and like tell me things or even like they're having beef with their husband who paid for it and their husband's mad and their husband calls me oh, and, and there's I'm like, a story time for bro, that. One. And I have a whole story time on that one too. But like, my thing is, it's like. You have to remember at the end of the day, you're a business. You're So yeah. don't get caught up in like petty, catty little arguments. If someone's screaming at you, calmly be like, I understand that you're upset. But don't, <laughs> like, you know, but, don't take but that don't let for... Them, don't let them walk over you, dude. Yeah, like, don't, don't let them do that Don't be like, you. you're still a person. Don't be like, oh, well, I have to be a professional. That's why I don't care about my story times. I tell them because I'm like, I do have to be a professional, but at the same time, People need to respect other people. We're human beings, and, like, mm -hmm. there's things that you should and should not say. And Because now, me, now I'm older. I've been oh, in the yeah. game for a minute. Ain't nobody talk to me stupid no more. Like, nobody. No, you gotta be. Nobody. They'll come at me correctly, like, hey, girl, I didn't, whatever. You know, and I'm like, all right, I understand, you know, because we're all human. We're all people. You have to have a certain level of respect when you're speaking to somebody. Like, you can't just talk to people like they're stupid because you don't know if they're going through something and they're going to pop off on you. Yeah. And they're, they have built up anger they've been holding since, like, 2006. You don't know. <laughs> and you're, you're the, you're the like, you're just like, you're, whatever. like, the one that, like, broke the camel's back and you just, have, like, just done. And she and that doesn't off. mean to be ratchet either and go no, fighting don't people. No, don't, don't be, be ratchet. Or, yeah, don't be messy. I'm talking and about be being ratchet. mature and having an adult conversation and don't call nobody dumb or, oh, I think you're just trying to whatever and, like, don't, don't yeah. be catty. Because, okay, be catty. so, like, like, I have seen, like, I tell you guys, there is forums. I'm not the only one. I know there's a lot of hairdressers out there that got story texts, but I'm not the only one. There's forums where people say, and they screenshot text messages, and they put it on Instagram for other hairdressers to kind of rela relate to and laugh at. But I'd be reading some of those, and I'm like... Yeah, we're going back and forth. Well, like, there's like, no, like, 
some of them are rude. Like as a like as a professional, their responses are so like yeah petty and rude. Like, I'm I like had, I wouldn't be petty. I had seen one one time where it was a girl and she canceled because something had happened, and the stylist was like oh ha ha whatever and like made like a joke about it, and then the girl was like I don't you know I don't like you know it like, turned into like a ratchet like back and forth yeah. confrontation, and it's like you can't do that like. Like there's an I'm you know what I'm we need to make a whole another video That's on that too. Whole, like, yeah. There's just so much that there's you so have much to go that into. you can't like don't think that you're the shit and you can just pop off on somebody like no this is your business at the end of the day as a business you have to somehow compromise with people and get an understanding and like a and a I'm a so there's a lot of tea to be spilled but I'm not gonna spill it but just know hairdressers it gets around. You'll be hearing all kinds of gossip about other hairdressers from clients. I'm sure there's gossip about all of us. Yeah, there's. Pero me vale. <laughs> How did you manage your personal life as well as your business? Ooh, I have a whole story time on that too. It's been eight years. Um, I want to say for me, the most consistent thing in my job is my career. Mm -hmm. Like, my job is the one thing that I've always been on it. Like, no matter if I was going through some things or... Because I've been, like, moved out and gone to work the next day from, like, an ex-boyfriend's house or had drama with somebody and went to work the next day or had someone pass away while I'm at work and I have to, like, eat up my emotions and mm -hmm. wait until I'm off of work to flip out. Like, you have to put on a face. It sounds... It sounds bad. It really does. But you have to remember at the end of the day, this is I your career. Like... like it's almost like because we do get clients that also go through that stuff. And so you ask, like, you do have to put a face. And then it's like you have to care about what they're having to say, even though you're going through stuff. Yeah. You just kind of have, have to put, to put on put a face. Them and first. Just, yeah. You, you have, have to, to put, put your first. clients first. Because it's like, say you're you're dating somebody and y'all break up. You can't just cl cancel all your clients the next day because you're sad. No, mm -hmm. bitch, you better get up and go make that money harder because you're sad. Like, that's be basically... like, whatever. You know what? I don't have to buy him a Christmas gift. <laughs> I'm gonna like, keep all this money and I'm gonna treat myself. Nah, bitch, what gift? No, I'm just, <laughs> literally, it's like no, I'm just gonna but, go to work and. But seriously, it sounds like you have to put on the facade. I mean, it's true. There's been times I've been going through some things at work, and I literally go to the back and I just, you know, you have a little you, moment. You, yeah. And everyone's moment. like, "You good?" And you're like, "I'm good." And you just, and you just eat up that emotion and you just use it to go harder at work. Like, don't don't lose yourself mm -hmm. because of some petty drama that's not gonna matter next year. Well, so me, I've always had boyfriends for long term. So if I'm dating someone and something happens because you know a lot of people, oh. your business will get out it on will. this, whether you like it I, or not. To say that, I'm like, let me turn my phone off for this one. <laughs> let me get my shut it down. down. <laughs> I want to say that literally. The town, we, okay, we we work in DFW, as you guys know. It is such a small, small world, world. Bro. literally. Like, we'll have clients that know each other. We don't know that they know each other. And they're in the same room, and they same hate room, each other, and we won't even know. Or, literally, we did have that, where they were in the same yeah. room. They're like, we're not best friends anymore. But they made this appointment like, while they were friends, yeah. and then they show up, and then they're not friends. You have to be selective with how you share. Cause no, I feel you like don't share. What I've learned over the years from listening to people's tea, you never <laughs> spill the tea if you spill the tea you will get stained and by stain i mean probably somebody's gonna try to fight you because you told them i business. have <laughs> such a heart well i'm not from the area so i don't really know like a lot of people you guys know that i travel an hour to work and everything I do hear a lot of tea and you know it's interesting and it's hard because you kind of just want to get along with your client and you're just like oh yeah like i totally agree with you mm -hmm. but at the same time you have to be careful because you never know like oh she agreed you with know, me what and my, it'll get out, i'm gonna you know? i'm gonna share one of my secrets that i do Tell and us. I know, because my friends know I do this too, and I really try not to do this, but it's just because you listen to people all day. Like, you listen to people's personal you, uh, really? Oh my god, that's crazy. For real? And, like, I am listening, but I try not to have too much of an opinion on mm -hmm. someone's conversation because I don't want anything to be misconstrued or to where it seems like I was talking and shit. For real, for real, you could lose money in a sense from getting in drama. For getting in drama mm -hmm. and being a problematic so, stylist. So, example, if you have a girl who's married and her man brings a different girl another week, oh my god, and something happens, you just gotta act like you don't even remember whose husband that is. Be like, or sometimes oh. I don't even know. No. I don't just don't get too involved. Like Things, last like, week, I had a client and she was talking mad shit about her baby daddy. 
and then we didn't even know and i'm like over there i'm just like oh yeah like what yeah, you know because okay. you get into it because you're like you're their therapist She's you're getting into, yeah you get into the gossip with them and you're like oh your baby daddy did what you know all this stuff and then she like we didn't even know I asked my co-workers uh client that was in the chair next to her like a question and stuff and she was like oh yeah i'm your baby daddy's prima i was like ah! Did we talk shit? Like, did we say something really mm-hmm. bad? I don't think we said anything bad. But me, I try to just kind of cut. When it starts getting to that, like, place where they're taught, like, details, you know, and talking about yeah. stuff, I kind of just try to change the subject. I know a lot of people in Fort Worth, and it's not... Because Sammy was in a video on Nortis. Nortis is 23, and that's a whole other story time that she will do I'm going to share that, like, next year, because it's too Oh, my soon. God. Too but you two still too new for oh, them to know the old you me. You guys need to learn old that's Sammy. That's the old Sammy. The new Sammy is new and improved. I go to church and talk to the she Lord about the my problems. Lord. You just have to watch yourself. Like, for me now, back in the day, I was real ratchet. Like, real hella ratchet to where I was, like, getting into fights. I was always having beef with somebody somebody so and so didn't like me i would pop off i would go crazy Mm -hmm. in my career early that people know everybody so i had clients that were coming and telling me like oh you fought my cousin or you did this or you did that (laughs) and they still come to you you know and i'm like bro like (laughs) and and i I have to like fess up to like oh my god i'm sorry like i'm not like that anymore you know and i mean now i'm okay because it's been so long since i've been in anybody's really drama or anything and but in the beginning you have to remember you have to rebrand yourself like you're you're looked at as a business professional do you want to be that girl that's dancing on the bar half-ass naked drunk on 7th street and everybody can see you and they're like she does my hair or my grandma's hair and oh my, my you know and you don't want to be and then you're the cheese of the whole and then you're the cheese of, of the, the whole fucking barrio because you yeah. want to be acting out i mean i have fun i do fun stuff but i have to watch but the like, way i act bro. like for real you want to present yeah. yourself as a professional no one's gonna want to pay you all this money to do their hair they're if, gonna be i know what you're spending your money on you go to get bottle service every weekend i mean i do but i don't have <laughs> i don't spend the whole money you just have to you just have to look at how and it's not even just partying it's like you don't want to be that messy person in drama or that short short like cutting someone short like yeah. of you know of your work because you're out here bullshitting one thing you could do differently with your business what would it be like i haven't been me i'm trying to get more into social media marketing mm-hmm. because i've i've been on social media for a minute i had a pretty good following in the beginning um because of the, the <laughs> Her little video yeah well, <laughs> that's that was like 10 years ago just so y'all that, know yeah i would say i'm just trying to get more into the social media thing because think about it social media it seems overrated it seems like something that you're like that you know who gives a shit about being on social media but this is a lot of people's way of interacting with the world there are women out there that they stay home because they have children they have a family they have a life this is their interaction so you want to be able to portray your personality and your professionalism through the internet so that way these people can see you and be like oh that's legit just remember when you're doing your business it's not about just doing hair it's about yourself like you being secure within yourself to be confident enough to get these clientele. just have to be that open person that they can go to. Seen as some snooty girl on social media that, you know, they're going to feel embarrassed to come at you because they're yeah. like, oh, you know, like maybe she's going like, to think it, some it, type of way about it. You kind of have to be a little relatable, too. Yeah, you have you, to be relatable. Be real. Wanna, yeah, yeah, be real. Don't be like fake because nobody wants to go to somebody that's like looks like they're perfect. Yeah. And like, I mean, some people do because that's an aesthetic. I mean, looking a certain way and acting a certain way is two different things. Yeah. So I have that problem with people in general. Like they think I'm a certain way. Until yeah. they talk to me. And then they're like, oh, okay. She's really chill. Yeah, cool. like I'm chill. Just Question chill. before we wrap this video up because this Woo! video is a hot minute. So where do you see yourself in 10 years? Girl. So we're going to talk about um, answer it personal and business wise. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? Pers- like personally? Like like personally in your life. Like do you want to be married? Do you want to have kids? Like where do, you, where do you see yourself in 10 years? I don't know if I want to do the whole marriage thing. I don't know. I, I don't think know. in you 10 go first. years... I see myself with, maybe I'll be married, maybe I'll have like a little rug rat or two. <laughs> rug rat. Um, and then as for business-wise, I I don't know. I don't know where what exactly I want to do just yet. You guys know that I'm debating with influencer, social media kind of stuff, education, educator kind of thing, mm-hmm. or sticking in a salon, being a salon owner, 
dealing with that whole side of the business so I don't really know where I see myself because I'm still like I'm 20 guys I'm about to be 21 so I'm still going up and down with and what I want to do I feel like when I was like 20 21 I had a totally different outlook on what I wanted than what I want now from mm -hmm. all the years that I put in this I used to be like oh I want to own a salon I want to be a salon owner but the more you I've been around the yeah the industry my focus has shifted from educating like to one day being an educator or being in, um, you know, or even just doing YouTube and giving advice to like girls who don't know what to do or they need like, you know, they need help. Yeah. Okay, guys. So that was the last question. I hope you guys enjoyed us rambling about everything. Salon things. Salon things. I do want to do more <laughs> videos like this with, mm -hmm. um, you know. With more guests, of us yeah. yes with everybody that i work with and everybody in the salon because we're a shit show we're all time. pretty much the same person but in different personalities in different forms yeah <laughs> different people i'm like the the hood she's like the, the hood, uh, hood mom yeah hood mommy <laughs> oh my god i'm dead i'm like the baby yeah i'm like still learning everything. i'm like the senora of the salon pretty much <laughs> literally senora, senora but guys i am going to post Post. I'm going to link her information, her Instagram, her YouTube, can follow me. We'll all link her up. stuff. Let Literally. me know what you want. Yeah. Because I just barely started my YouTube, so I'm still, like, in the beginning. Yeah, she's still in the process yeah. of, like, posting everything. Get her to be more consistent, but, you know. Yeah, you know, your girl's busy, so I'm trying to make more time for it. So we'll see. I'll have all that in the description box down below, as well as just everything. Like, all our social medias and stuff will be down there. It's literally the end. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed us I'll talking. see y'all later. I'll um, be back one day. We will do more videos. Next time, maybe we'll do a story time, or I don't know what we should do. Ooh, we should do, like, our first bad experience that we remember. Or the worst. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I haven't had too many. You I haven't know, had a lot. You guys lot, know I'd be talking about all these kind of cheesements with my story maybe. time. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, don't forget, of course, to check out her channel yeah, and subscribe. Thank you guys so, so much. Woo! I will see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys. <laughs>